Ghana has been an active member of the Commonwealth, the economic community of West African states that echo us, the African Union and the United Nations. But we start off our review from the West African sub-region where Ghana was chairing. President Akufado's last term in office saw two notable coups, which was in Guinea-Bissau, which was actually a failed coup, and then also Burkina Faso. You would recall that in previous years, there were two other coups that carried forward into the year 2022, which was in Mali and in Guinea. Ghana's president, Nana Adudankwe Kufuado, who was then the chairman of the ECOWAS Commission, suspended the membership of these countries and imposed sanctions on them. Several negotiations and consultations were instituted to help the countries transition back to democratic rule. President Akufuado described the situation as a dangerous trend within the sub-region. I want to welcome your excellencies back to Accra again to take stock of where we are with our three recalcitrant member states, Mali, Guinea and Burkina Faso. On Sunday, July 3, 2022, Ghana hosted the 61st Ordinary Session of ECOWAS, bringing President Akufuado's tenure as chair of the ECOWAS to an end after two consecutive terms. Burkina Faso, Mali and Guinea were still struggling to revert to democratic rule at the time. In the larger global community though, Ghana was elected to be a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council to serve for two terms, that is 2022 to 2023. That is the fourth time Ghana has been elected to be on the UN Security Council. The first was from 1962 to 63, then 86 to 87, 2006 to 2007, and 2022 to 2023. In the month of November, Ghana assumed the presidency of the UN Security Council under the leadership of Ambassador Harold Ajeman, Ghana's permanent representative to the United Nations. Within the month of November, several high-profile engagements were made, including an open ministerial debate chaired by Shirley Ayoko Butri, Ghana's foreign minister. President Akufuado also chaired a debate at the heads of state's level on the topic counter-terrorism in Africa, an imperative for peace, security and development. Still at the United Nations level, Ghana voted on a number of occasions in favor of sanctions against Russia who had invaded Ukraine. Ghana also blamed its economic struggles on the Russian attack on Ukraine, forcing the Russian embassy in Ghana to issue a tweet rebuttal. Beyond the votes, Ghana's foreign minister and Harold Ajeman were quite vocal in condemning the Russian attack. Ghana does not and will not recognize any territory that is unilaterally and forcefully required or acquired as dismembered from a sovereign entity. We reiterate the call on the Russian Federation to immediately and unconditionally cease its operations withdraw its troops from the internationally recognized borders of Ukraine and respect its neighbor's sovereignty and political independence. The developments that are taking place in Ukraine are indeed troubling. The situation has implications not only for Ukraine and its immediate neighbors, but also for all our countries. Security is indivisible, and the insecurity of one is the insecurity of all. As we indicated in our statement to the Council on Monday night, Ghana deeply regrets the decision of the Russian Federation to naturally recognize the non-government controlled regions of Ukraine and to send troops into those regions. The attacks on Ukraine forced many countries, including Ghana, to evacuate its citizens, especially students from Ukraine. Over 200 Ghanaian students were evacuated back to Ghana. Other major highlights in the year under review include Ghana's participation in the United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP27, held at Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt. We also took part in the second edition of the United Nations Africa Summit, on the back of which President Akufuado held talks with the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, where he raised the issue of the pro-Russian Wagner Group's presence in Burkina Faso, which raised some diplomatic concerns. Today, Russian mercenaries are on our northern border. Burkina Faso has now entered into an arrangement 
uh, to go along with Mali in employing the Wagner forces there. I believe a mine in southern Burkina has been allocated to them as a form of payment for their services. Prime Minister of Burkina Faso in the last 10 days has been in Moscow. And to have them operating on our northern border is particularly distressing for us in Ghana. The Ukraine war, where we have been very, very vocal and upfront about condemning the invasion of Russia, by Russia. And therefore, they're now to have this group at our borders is a matter of some considerable disquiet and concern for us. This triggered a series of diplomatic reactions, which was resolved later with Ghana's National Security Minister, Kandapa, traveling to Burkina Faso to meet with the head of the military junta, who were the coup leaders. Other events worthy of note included Ghana's participation in the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Kigali, Rwanda in June, the Tokyo International Conference on Development, TICAD, the G7 Africa Summit in Germany, the Commonwealth Reimagined Summit, just to name a few. In 2022, Ghana also introduced the e-visa system for travelers heading into Ghana. The visit of the Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba was also a major highlight. The hosting of the headquarters of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area after remains one of the high attraction points of the international business community. We end our year in review with a quote from Busumuru Kofianan, the former United Nations Secretary General, which says, We may have different religions, different skin color, different languages, but we belong to one human race. Martin Nasiedudate, TV3 News, Accra.